Hi guys, salut tout le monde, I'm Maya and I'm French and I'm gonna keep watching Emily in Paris because you've been asking us to continue. Today I'm gonna watch episode 4. Uh, je prends le fleur, the, the pink roses, uh, the rosé rose, the, the rosé Ah uh, non, yes. non, mademoiselle, non. Ça c'est pas pour vous, ça. C'est des roses du sud. Oh, ça c'est pour vous. Euh, Bonjour Claudette. C'est les belles roses qu'elle veut acheter, pas celle-ci. It's five euro sixty, but run it up to six. Really? Mm -hmm. Oh, merci. Very much. Thank you. My lousy French gets me nowhere. No, she's not nice to anyone. Okay, it's starting strong with the stereotypes again. Um, no, I guess the vendor, like the lady, is not really nice. It's she's actually really rude, and doesn't even want Emily to buy the roses she wants. Again, it's a silly show. Don't take it as truthful. You won't be sold like the, you know, the stupidest or the ugliest flowers. The ones she wants are probably more expensive, so of course they'll be happy to sell it to you guys, right? Uh, or to her. Yeah, it's been a while since I watched the show. So yeah, I do remember it's a light show. It's, you know, like it's silly. It's full of stereotypes. Again, don't take everything as tr the truth. Don't be scared to talk to vendors thinking they would do that to you guys. Yeah, I don't think that would happen. But sometimes, of course, some people can be super rude, especially in um, touristy areas. Yeah. Visiting from the States. I live here now. Wow, I just heard myself say that out loud and I don't even believe me. <laughs> Emily. Camille. Enchanté. A little interesting thing we say when we meet someone, so nice to meet you, we say enchanté. Enchanté. So it's, it sounds a little fancy, it sounds kind of formal, but that's the only thing we have like to say that to express that so you can say that when you meet someone in a very formal situation at work enchanté enchanté or even if you meet a friend of a friend in a casual setting so yeah enchanté is a really important thing to know here's a little example of a conversation it can go like this salut c'est quoi ton nom ah oh, okay moi c'est maya enchanté or you don't even have to shake hands, you can just, you know, whatever. I'm awkward, but yeah. <laughs> Salut, c'est quoi ton nom? Oh, okay, cool. Moi, c'est Maya. Enchanté. Note how I didn't say je m'appelle Maya. It's not used as often as you think it would be. I usually say moi, c'est Maya. Moi, c'est Maya. Sorry for the noise, like the neighbors are doing some construction work. So if you hear something... That's what's going on. You really have to go to Le Marché des Enfants Rouges. It's in the Marais. Okay. You have so many cool places to check out there. Oh, she's so right. Le Marché des Enfants Rouges is such a great place. It's a little hidden market, really discreet. And it's cool. There's You can buy produce, uh, vegetables or whatever, but there's a bunch of restaurants in there. It's so great. There's like crepe and then Moroccan food. I think there's a sushi restaurant as well. I think there is like cocktails and I don't remember I haven't been in a while but it's I really recommend that place it's great I work for an art gallery and we're having an opening tonight mm, from crowds and some people from Chicago oh it's at Galerie de Garipu in the fourth which is next to the fifth which is just across the river Ugh, you'll get the hang of it okay I have to go okay oh I'm sorry <laughs> okay I got, I got surprised. Yeah, I, w I was thinking, wait, are they going for a hug? That's weird, we don't do that. But yeah, I guess she was going to do the bees. And that is something that might happen. I mean, here they're clearly, you know, going for a straight kiss in how they play the role, right? Or played the scene. But yeah, that's that's kind of annoying because when you do the bees, everyone starts kind of differently. You never know if you have to start on the right or on the left. Uh, usually it's better to stick with the right. That's what most people do and you're <laughs> you can avoid situations like that. But uh, so many times, even between French people, we're like, oh, 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 well, <laughs> you know, kind of joking around 
about that. So yeah, that happens a lot. Like the awkward moment of like, oh wait, we're not going in the same direction, you know, at the same time. Uh, mademoiselle, vos paquets sont arrivés. Vos paquets? Paquets? American paquets? <gasps> My paquets! Finally! Uh, madame, ce possible. Je suis occupé. Oh yeah, okay, no, never mind then. I got it. I got it. But who's got you? Um, I'm stopping very often, but there's a lot of interesting things happening. Um, this scene where she asks for help to the concierge is uh, made me think of a situation recently. I guess, I don't know how it is in every country. Uh, I know that for Americans, um, I've met some Americans who kind of expect to be helped a lot by the landlord or by the concierge kind of like the client mentality like if you pay you should be able to ask for help like a lot and things are different here we are supposed to be more independent we don't really ask for help that's a parisian thing as well everyone kind of sticks to themselves it has its perks and it's can also be a little bit sad because you don't get, get to be so friendly with all of your neighbors. It really depends on the people, of course, but it happens sometimes, like my brother and his wife, uh, they became such great friends with their neighbors. They would always help each other and, you know, like have dinners together or whatever. So, but, but it is definitely super rare. But to go back to the first idea, people in Paris usually stick to themselves. You don't become such good friends with your neighbors and if you want help of course you can ask but I don't know usually if we're moving stuff or if we're bringing a lot of things to our apartment or we have a lot of you know packets as she does we don't ask for help and if you do it once it's fine uh, make sure to you know like be nice to your neighbors later and give them something in exchange or whatever but if you're doing that very often, calling your landlord for every little questions all the time, you will be perceived as kind of problematic and annoying. Uh, that's kind of the stone cold truth. I prefer to, you know, tell you how it is here. So you avoid situations and also so you understand how things are, you know, working here in Paris and how people can perceive you. Yeah, it's, it's kind of, that's... <laughs> That's not the best part about Paris. Yeah, you have to deal with stuff on your own. Mm, oh my God. I feel like I've never had an omelet before. This was amazing. I'm going to help you clean up before I go. Oh, oh no, no. <laughs> it, it, that ruins the pan. It's so... Uh, see, that's the secret to Rome. It's, we never clean. We let things season. Those are my rules. Again, don't take everything as fact. I've seen people asking us that question so many times in the comments. Do we not clean our pots and pans in France? Yes, of course we do. This is different. It's a cast iron. Um, I don't exactly know how to use it. I don't own one myself. I've heard it's like there are some rules to it. You can't really soap it too much. I don't know. I don't want to like go into every little detail of the show, but so many people asked us that question in the, in the comments. So I had to mention it. Let's keep watching. Emily! Hi! Hi. I'm so glad you made it. Oh, so Chicago meets Chicago. Oh. Round is your and Emily Cooper. <laughs> I'm such a huge fan. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so, let's stop later about that piece of cake. Yeah, don't forget. <laughs> thank you. I'm again. so glad you made it. <laughs> okay, a little detail caught my eye. Um, the fact that Camille did the piece a, a second time to Emily is kind of weird. You just do it when you say hi, when she sees her at the party, you know, and she should do it again when she leaves, if she wants. But yeah, like just saying bye because she's gonna you know talk to someone else at the party like there's no reason to do that at that point <laughs> 
This next scene is interesting and I'll tell you a little bit about restaurants in Paris. I'm up for anything with a Michelin star. Emily, you're the expert on everything in Paris. So you make the reservation and make sure we don't disappoint our friend Randy on his last night. Hmm? I'm on it. <laughs> Thanks. Restaurant chez Chloé. Yes. T -t Tonight. Now. Ce soir, non. It's very important. It's impossible. We are completely booked. Yes, I understand. It's completely full. Thank you. It's so cool because in Paris there's so much choice. Like there's so many incredible restaurants. It can get stressful to like to research, especially if you don't know anything, if you don't know any restaurants, or if you're trying to find new ones. Trying to get a table for the same day can be tricky, especially if it's like a Saturday night or a Friday night. That's um, that's tough. That's especially for restaurants with Michelin stars, the restaurant étoilé, we say. Un restaurant étoilé. If you want to try one of those restaurants, those restaurants étoilés, one day in Paris, and they're way out of your budget, which fair, let's be honest, they're really expensive, you can go there for lunch, for lunch during the week, for example. It's way cheaper. Uh, there's less people as well. It's, it's just great and the food is just as good. But going at a Michelin star restaurant on a Saturday night is going to be packed. It's going to be hard to have find a reservation and it's just going to be twice the price. So yeah, I would suggest <laughs> try maybe for lunch. So madame. What's more of us here? Um, a table for six person under the name Emily Cooper. We don't have a reservation for that name. Here's the email confirmation. Six people, 9 p.m., 8, 11. Wonderful. We'll see you November 8th. Oh. You booked the 8th of November. This is the 11th of August. Oh my god. You reverse the dates. No, you reverse the dates. Oh, that's really unlucky. I'm sure that happens when you're so used to a system you don't think when you're trying to do stuff automatically. But yes, the date, how we write our dates is reversed compared to how you do it in the US. Let's say the 1st November of 2021, we are going to write 01-11-2021. Yeah, you have to think about it. It's going to be reversed to what you're used to. <laughs> Oh, and here is our brilliant and amazing chef and my friend Gabriel. Okay, the restaurant where Gabriel is working would be considered bistronomy. Bistronomy. So that type of cuisine is a mis mix between bistro, bistro and gastronomy. Gastronomy is fine dining, fine French dining. And bistro is like a brasserie, which is traditional, simple French meal. So if you're looking to eat really well in Paris, you can look at lists of bistronomy and you'll find really good restaurants. They're usually cheaper than the restaurant étoilé. Okay, that's it for this episode. It was really fun to rewatch it again and share some cultural stuff with you guys. Of course, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them down in the comments. As usual, make sure to check out our Instagram. We are very present over there and chatting with you guys. You can help us over on Patreon as well. We have a private group chat. We also have a private Facebook group where you can meet people and chat with them, practice with them, meet other students, meet some French people on there as well. And if you want to learn more with us, you can go to our website streetfrench.org and check out our free e-course. That's it for this video and see you next time. Salut! Bye bye!